Hello, everyone, and welcome to the What the Sheep Podcast, episode 79, where Alana and myself will be discussing, breaking down, and trying not to freak out over some really awesome stuff that happened in Critical Role Campaign 3, episode 24, starting with the very beginning, continuing their journey towards Osiris. And uh, for the most part, it went uh, swimmingly, except for the fact that they encountered... Something? A creature? Something? Uh, a squid creature thing. Um, and I don't, um, you, usually when I don't know what a creature is that gets brought up, I'll look at the yeah. Twitch chat to see what it is so I can mm. look it up. But I don't think yeah. anyone knows what this no, is. No, it was, I think Matt said Dustra, like dust yeah. Ra, but I, I couldn't. And then when I thought I was starting to get a handle on the description of it, I was like, oh, so maybe like, you know, some kind of like land octopus sort of thing. And then he described it had hands or something. Yeah. And I was like, that oh, was... that's weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Dustra is gargantuan size, says Kata Dice. Yeah, so it's, it's big. So land cracking. Yeah, land cracking kind yeah, of. Yeah, it could, so be, could be what with it is. With hands. Um, yep. And what's interesting yeah. is that it, it had intelligence. You know, it could mm. communicate. Um, yeah, it, and it seemed to have been uh, uh, its babies. Its babies were taken yeah, from it. It's little babies born. Babies. Yeah, no, that, that that was um, that was a fun encounter because it was very much like it was clear that they didn't want to kill it or right. potentially uh, injure it in any way. But it was also like, ooh, we might lose control here. This is something right. that we might have no choice uh, but to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it was cool. I, I kind of yeah, wish they cool. had, like, figured out more of what it was and mm -hmm. uh, what it was doing, but they obviously had to get to um, Basarus and right. continue the story. But it might come up again. It might be like, you know, they find who stole its babies at yeah, some point. Yeah, they might come across some papers that talk about Dustra Spawn or something mm. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I could definitely, definitely see it. Um, yeah. There were a lot of, I took note, there were a lot of natural ones in that first half of the episode yeah um, with either attacking or persuading there were there were a lot there were a mm. lot um yeah it was a real yeah. swingy episode because then when it gets yeah. to combat oh, yeah. they had like, a lot of natural 20s yeah yeah no that was really funny um because the one that i remember the most is when after they had saved the caravan and laudna was like trying to get some like payment for doing it <laughs> with the natural yeah. one persuasion yeah Got some apples some fleece <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, it's good. There's like perfectly on brand for what they what they deserve. Yeah, but also it's kind of stingy from the caravan. Like honestly, they just got yeah well warned and saved yeah, from seriously. this creature. A yeah, little bit of right. gratitude would be nice. Yeah, um, but it's alright. No, that was that was fun. I um, I think not to like jump ahead for the whole episode, oh. but I I was kind of expecting at every point this episode for there to be some Lord in the Imogen, uh. Yeah. Like, uh, tension, mm -hmm. but I didn't really sense any of it. There was, like, maybe a little bit yeah, where little. Imogen at one point was, like, you know, just very short with mm -hmm. Lorna and kind of just ignored her a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I mean, she was flying on her back. They were doing stuff together. I was just kind of waiting for every little moment to be, like, you know, mm -hmm. there's some stinginess there. Um, yeah. But, no, we didn't get it. Not yet. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's coming, get. though. It's, it's, it's simmering. Oh, it's simmering yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I was I was thinking the same thing, and it seemed like Sam was trying to get more from it because obviously he's not going to meta game and just assume something's mm, wrong. Yeah, 100%. but he was trying to do something in character that might unveil yeah. that there's something going on because if she was like, "Hey, mm. you know, whenever you want to do that dream thing, I can go get Laudna," but an image was yeah. like, "Nope, you know, I'll just I'll let no, you no, know." Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was like the closest we got, and. I, and yeah, I mean Sam's great because he doesn't meta game generally, mm -hmm. so it was it was nice for him to not to push it and be like, oh, you sure? Like, let me go yeah. get Lorna now and discuss it with her. Yeah, so it was it was really well played, and it's going to be that slow build, I think, of mm -hmm. of tension and um, or uh, I'm hoping with the month break because I think they said they're taking three three weeks off between filming. I'm hoping there's still like that oh, yeah. feeling to mm -hmm. it, like they 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 kind of. Sometimes when they take breaks and they come back and they're like, well, what were we doing? What yeah, do you think? Right, yeah. um, Where so I'm hoping those feelings, and, those feelings and emotions are still there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be good. 
yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely excited to see more see more of that kind of angst. Um, well, another note that I wrote down is that Xandis, Captain Xandis of the mm. ship, is such a dangerous complimentary companion to have with Fern, uh, because mm. Fern was like throwing out like the wildest ideas on how to deal with this this squid creature, mm -hmm. and the captain was just like, yeah, yeah. Sure. Let's That'd try it. Great. Let's do it. <laughs> Which I think is a dangerous combination, especially because you know Fern's Fern's chaotic chaotic nature. But I just wrote down yeah. that uh, uh, Xandis and Fern would be the best duo. Um, yeah. If they ever had their own spinoff. Such a fun character. I know we talked about it last week. Yeah. But the, the, the captain's just great. Um, one just the, the accent. Yeah. But also just yeah how kind of. As you say, eager and um, open to literally any of the shit that the Bell Tells are doing. Um, it's good. I'm excited to kind of see if they're able to get, uh, like, if, for example, they need, like, a quick getaway, if mm -hmm. they're going to be able to get in contact with them again and have the airship pick them up, or if it's going to be a long walk back to Drusar, um, which I think would be also kind of cool because that would be a massive yeah. travel up the foot. That's like cross country. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But they might even decide to keep heading south after Basarus. Like, they don't know. <laughs> Anything well, I think um, is Esteros offered to fly them to yeah. Eos once Eos. once they're done yeah. here. So I guess they might just like once they're done with Armand, they just might kind of like jumping backwards and yeah. forwards. They might like send Esteros a message and be like, "Yo, I'm back now." He did. I don't, yeah, we've talked about this. I don't see, I don't see um, Trashy <laughs> going back alive. No, yeah, he's probably gonna die. But that is, that is something we can talk about the Armand stuff. So eventually, they did arrive in Basurus, and the mm -hmm. introduction to the city was yeah. fucking awesome. Like such Mad Max vibes. I love. Oh, hundred percent. Especially 100%. like the greeting of like the 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 bikers that that rode up on him uh, to welcome him. Was, that was really yeah. cool. I like that we're kind of getting vehicles like that in yeah. Critical Role. It feels like the world is evolving um, mm -hmm. a little bit. It was kind of like Legend of Korra when you come from Last End yeah. and you start with there's cars. You're like, what, there's, there's fucking cars in this yeah. world? Like, yeah. what the hell? It was a bit like that. It's like, oh my God, there's, there's like rideable machines um, mm -hmm. in, <laughs> in Critical Role. But it's kind of cool. I like that this little bit of progression that we're seeing to... Yeah. I mean, it was it was essentially constructs or whatever. You could argue whatever it was, but it felt like yeah, like motorized vehicles that they were they were moving yeah. around on, which I just thought was really sweet. I can't wait for them to get into a um, into like a d dirt bike race, <laughs> fleeing the yeah. city yeah. on them. Yeah, had like real pedal to the metal adventure zone vibes from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I, I love this place, um, and. Because I'm a huge Ashton fan, and it seems like this place is going to be like, there's just going to be a bunch of Ashtons everywhere. Kind of how, it is, yeah. how it's going to be. Ooh. It was interesting, too. Ashton dropped the name Greymore, and they like yeah. responded to it, said, oh, are you of the house? Mm -hmm. So do we think that's like a uh, like an orphanage, or like do we think it's like now a... Now I'm not sure. An Ashton Matt, Manor house? Because Matt said that there's like a bunch of factions... That yeah. live out here, Ooh. so I'm wondering if Greymore is just another faction. Yeah, taking on the name of like the um. Yeah, like their the clan patron. name or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I like it. Like, that's that's cool. what it be. It's either an orphanage or it's like a another faction. Yeah. So, that's gonna be really cool. What I am worried about is because we know the Paragon's Call is around here, since they mm -hmm. led here with Armand Treshi. I'm worried mm -hmm. that someone might recognize the party. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they have their cloaks and stuff, but. <laughs> They're yeah. very loud in appearance. <laughs> and if and also, if skyships don't usually come out here, and then a skyship suddenly came in the middle of the night, I feel like that's going to be like mm -hmm. sirens for yeah. Armand and the Paragon's call. Yeah. And that, that's what the guy said too. He's like, well, we haven't seen one of these in a very long time. Yeah. Like, people are going to be talking about this for weeks. It also makes me question how Armand Treshi got out there. Like, they must have just trekked out there, or do they maybe fly in but get dropped off? further away from the mm. city because you would imagine Treshy would have flown out there. Right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, perhaps they had other means of getting there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it's, it's, it, it does paint a bit of a target on their backs because 
I mean, people saw them come from there. People in the city know that it was them on the airship, uh, mm -hmm. and that could easily be passed around. I'm just excited for more adventures in the city. I think it's going to be a really fun I place. I know. And, like, I'm, I'm hoping they actually end up staying here for a while, because I feel like there's any, like, you know, chaotic and potentially dangerous city is going to lead to a lot of really cool stuff that happen. Um, yeah. And, you know, already, I guess we can just move on to it now, because it's the big thing <laughs> that happened this episode. Erika yeah. Ishii hey. coming in here. Uh, Dusk, Fine, the man. elven warlock, who... Yeah has a really cool sword, a really cool rapier with, like, crystals and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. fey-touched. Uh, they've mm -hmm. been to the fey wild and all that, so if that's all happening with, uh, you know, Eric Eiji's character, Dusk, and stuff, it feels like we're probably going to be here for a while, because they still have to find Armand, and then mm -hmm. they have to help Dusk with whatever ends up happening with yeah. that character. Um... Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so exciting that Erica is finally yeah. on the main campaign yeah. of Critical Role. It's, like, the longest time coming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, yeah, no, it's a, it's such a cool character idea. The, the, the almost, not so much memory, well, I guess there's, like, an aspect of memory loss to them. Because they've yeah. said, like, you know, I can't remember certain aspects. I only remember this um, mm -hmm. Glenn that I am desperately trying to get to. Uh, so it yeah. feels like they've been like, you know, a little bit <laughs> cursed by the Feywild. Mm -hmm. um, not that that would ever happen in the Feywild. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm wondering if the end goal for this character is to return to the Feywild. Because um, mm -hmm. it seems like they, they're wanting, they're yearning to go back, but that could be part of the curse. That could be part of the, you know, enchantment that, you know, is forcing them to go back. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that story eventually plays out. If it leads us to the Feywild, if it uh, leads to them just breaking their pact, because mm -hmm. we can assume that they're Fey, a Fey patron. We could assume, yeah, but we don't likely. want to say. Yeah, You'll imagine if it's the Traveler. <laughs> God. Uh, probably not. I, That'd be funny. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty funny. Um, yeah, but um. Uh, oh, ooh, that's a good point for Lise in the chat saying could be Mori, could be like Fawn's grandmother. Oh. Um, or Autumn Queen. Or it could be Titania. There's so many Fae entities. I know. It there's, could be. there's there's a bunch. But it, it, yeah. And again, it's, it's so funny because I was worried that the party was going to make a bad name for themselves by getting into this scuffle and killing a few of them. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like the passerby was just <laughs> like, eh, <laughs> this happens. Because, yeah. you know, like, um, the last time we got in campaign two when we got to a really cool city, uh, Dark Toe. They were in there for like two episodes and they had to hightail out of there because they, you know, yeah. usurped yeah. one of the captains. So it's like <laughs> That was wild. That was like that's my favorite like three episode block of campaign yeah. two. Like getting to Dark Toe, having the fight, getting kicked out of Dark Toe. Yep. Um no, the, that was wild. That was um, I, I get for the the like meta sense of having to join that fight and help yeah. Erica's character. That was kind of brutal. They just went in and that straight was. up killed some bitches. Like yeah, I remember at one point they they said to Orem like, or Matt said Orem like, are you holding back? Was that like no? They was just like eh, no. Like I'm just I'm I'm fighting to fight. Like yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Well, I, yeah. I get it. It's like. Chetney the party, the party is blowing me away with their their violence. I, and yeah, yeah, Chetney doesn't. I mean, Chetney's violent all the time, but with like Imogen and like Orm, and especially it was, yeah, it's like yeah. holy moly. Yeah, I really. Uh, and I think really I think it wasn't so much that Orm wasn't like you know holding back. Oh, sorry, wasn't going for the kill with their attacks. It was just like he didn't seem that phase that he had knocked this guy down and that they were bleeding out. That's that's what I was trying to. Yeah, get to. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it, it was non lethal in the end. But it just felt very. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, it felt, felt like, you know, like what a martial kind of expert would feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just like, oh, God, we're just killing these guys in the street now. Yeah. Um, and For the most part. Yeah, and yeah. People are. Yeah, he did, he did you know, knock, knock some of them out, um, giving them a chance. But even still, it's. I mean, I guess that just goes to show the kind of people that are in this city where they just, you know, it's a very cutthroat. It's very, you know, yeah. rival of the fittest. So. I mean, they gotta they gotta adapt to it in order to survive. Mm. So, it was a fun fight though because it was oh, yeah. clearly like a good mix of um, 
combatants because there was like a spellcaster. Yeah. There was um, the knoll with the glaive, which is always fun. Uh, yeah, just like it was, it was like nice kind of classic mm -hmm. combat for them to get into with a lot of wild stuff happening. <laughs> uh, speaking of wild, uh, mm -hmm. Imogen channeled her uh, wild magic and uh, lost her hair as a Amazing. result. Amazing. She got forwarded. She got forwarded. That's so funny. And that's just... Uh, it's just, just going to have to grow back now, right? There's... That was... Wasn't it... I think it's after a long rest it grows back. Does it grow back? Yeah. Okay. I'll double check, but I, I feel like it was... While. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty funny. Um, or it might have been like with a lesser restoration. Or so. It's something like that. It's not oh, okay. permanent, that's for sure. But... Um, 55 or something. Um, yeah. 24 hours and it grows back? Oh, okay. Yeah. So... This will be this will be yeah. Imogen's, I guess, minor punishment it's, for being it's so, so fun. Old, uh, it's so funny that like her two wild magic surges so far have been cosmetic. Yeah. Um, and it's like just kind of horrifying cosmetic in the sense of like it's so loud the cosmetic changes like turning your skin blue. Yeah. Having your hair completely fall out. I want to go through and highlight all the other uh, wild magic things that are going to be cosmetic mm. and just like wait for those numbers to come up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I think it's fun. It's it's always fun. And I like that she gave it a go because Matt was like, well, you don't have to do this. This is like literally yeah. when you choose to do it. Um, but no, wild magic is fun. Yeah, I, I love it. I would do time. it every chance I could. I would do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, Ooh, yeah, that's true. Uh, what was I going to say? Someone had said something in chat that sparked an idea, but uh, I can't really remember. Uh, oh, no, because um, when, like, everyone knows, like, how wild wild magic can be and how devastating it mm -hmm. could potentially be. And it's just funny because the rest of the cast knows that, too. So I kind of got a good chuckle when uh, Laura rolled and got a 55 and Sam was like, oh, that's the worst one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's just funny. I, I get a good kick out of like those kind of jokes. They're kind of teasing, uh, yeah. Yeah, a little teasing. <laughs> but, I mean, eventually, she might roll a pretty bad one. Um, there are like some the pretty bad ones. Like the self fireball. That one's... <laughs> that one's a bit That's wrong. not even the worst one. That one's just bad in the situation. But there's some that yeah. will, like, just mess up your day. <laughs> mm. Yeah, a lot, um, a lot of them are just, like, quirky little things that happen or, like, inconveniences, but... <laughs> uh, they can get they can get pretty bad they can get pretty bad um but just some other looking stuff, at it now yeah. you can polymorph yourself into a sheep accidentally that's a great one <laughs> that's not bad that's fine it's a little, a little sheepy a little sheep yeah um no but some other some other stuff um with this combat we had um ashton using hyper rage which allowed them mm. as you said i think to attack like again yeah, those three attacks in is that. This, what is this subclass? This I, subclass is yeah, is insane. I wonder if I wonder if the hyper rage is the maybe the time six thing. Level, I think you got the six level feature maybe or have we seen anything maybe. new from Ashton since they got six level? Because it was well, yeah, because I think that their rage gets enhanced because when they got the space yeah. one, they were able to teleport. I think this one was yeah. time. The time-based one, yeah. So, so hyper rage, he was probably able to just attack again because he's so fast. So that's really cool. Mm. Yeah. I love that. So we've that. got we've got the, the space one is the teleporting. We can assume yeah. time one is the hyper rage. Yeah. We've still got there's gravity, gravity, and one other one. I think. I think there's four. Reasons. Time, space, time, gravity, space, gravity. Because the gravity one's the one where they go blue and red, right? I think that's when there's like a slow so that's like the magnet one <laughs> it makes you think of a magnet that's a possibility oh luck is that one has he has he gotten one of them yet <clears throat> i can't remember if, if, if they've gotten one yet but that that is probably the last one that sounds about <clears throat> right especially with dunamancy stuff um yeah but that it's was cool. really interesting i'm really I, <clears throat> please just yeah, people are saying please release <laughs> yeah Don't see adam <laughs> Just release them. Give us the stats, Matt. <laughs> Especially the empathy domain, because we got uh, we got Chetney yeah. as a trusted companion for FCG now. 
that yeah, that was actually my favorite part of the episode. I wanted to talk yeah. about that conversation. Yes. I, I really enjoyed that one on one with Chetney and FCG. Um, one just for the joke of yeah, Travis being like, "Oh, are we bonded companions now?" Yeah. And as you be like, "Oh, is this what this was all about?" Mm-hmm. Um, that was just a really fun uh, kind of oh yeah meta kind of moment. But I anything with FCG, I'm just so suspicious of. I feel like there has to be more to this bird? goddamn bird story. What? <laughs> like it's the fact that SCG, it, and it could just be like you know a bird that followed SCG yeah. around, yeah. And like you know attacked attacked them needlessly. Mm-hmm. But it feels some more sinister the way SCG is responding to it. Yeah, like the fact that cowering and quite like scared and upset by it. Um, it could, it would, it'd be equally as funny if it was just, you know, a bird flying around. Yeah, just like a pigeon, a mangy pigeon. But I can't help but think it's something more well, sinister because it's Sam. Like, I feel like you can't trust much of what uh, backstory Sam gives his characters. Yeah. I think, um, <laughs> I think a, a reason yeah. why it might be terrifying to FCG yeah. is because this is where FCG was made. Maybe when mm. FCG was a, a little baby, a little baby oh, construct. Um, little baby. Maybe the bird was like one of the first like scary things that they had encountered. Uh, mm. So that's just how he remembers it when he was a fresh, yeah. fresh memory. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think it's got it's got to come up. <laughs> yeah, I hope I, so. I, I, I hope so. so. Um, if not just for them to like randomly shout out shithead and just have that yeah. as the uh, as the call yeah, for, the code, the code for what's going on. Oh my on. god, it's so um, funny. Um, uh, and also just throughout that episode, just everyone touching FCG, oh, yeah. Ed Fern tracing on the yeah. on the front, and then yep. Travis for comedic effect doing the same thing. He's just like, well, what the hell's yeah, happening? Why is everyone touching me? The robbers did it too. One of the thugs. Yeah, they shot. They shot a bolt at SCG, yeah. and it's like, did it, did it dent? Did it like yeah. damage me in any way? Um, yep. <laughs> That's so funny. Ooh, maybe it's an Aarakocra. Can you guys think it's Vax? <laughs> that's yeah. I laughed at that. Yeah. Yeah, thinking they're a statue. That's that's a mm-hmm. very good point as well. No, it's something sinister. It's a, it's yeah, a fiend it's or something. And it's, yeah, it's Oban two point Mm-hmm. That's what it's gonna. Be. Yeah. No, but I, I'm super excited for all the potential like storylines for this because mm. it seems like we're gonna have Erica for a while, yeah, maybe a little bit, yeah, like an extended period of time, like uh, oh. perhaps uh, like Robbie or Dorian. I wonder um, if she's got a bit for the opening <laughs> opening song. Oh, that would be cool. Be... Yeah. Because be we don't fun. really know. We know. That she probably wants to get back to the Feywild, but we're still kind of mm. like not really sh- sure, like yeah, what her whole deal is quite yet. Um, yeah, she's very uh, very happy and open and yeah, <laughs> keen to share. I kind of like in those moments do slightly miss like a Caleb character who is like instantly distrusting or mistrusting of mm-hmm. new people they meet. Um, I get for the sense of, you know, having a guest player being more open, but I did always like the kind of, because it was only for a little, for mm. a little bit, but then Caleb just being like, no, I don't trust you. I'm not going to speak to you yeah. right now. Um, like that, that was always quite funny to me. Um, but yeah, no, these, these guys were just like, Hey friends. Yeah. Um, but someone actually, uh, Cato dice is a really interesting theory about dusk. Um, Kiddaday says, I have a theory on Dusk. I think she's originally part of the water Ashari, but the water plane has known holes in it, so I think she got sent to the Feywild and lost her memories. That would be cool. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. Uh, but I do like the potential that Dusk was from, or at least near, where Fern's Glen is. Or yeah. Or later, whatever, wherever that is. There's got to be, yeah, as I said, there's got to be a couple Glens in the Feywild. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I I couldn't help but think when I saw the art for Dusk, just 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 purely based on the colors oh, yeah. and everything, I was thinking like summer or autumn Aladrin. Mm-hmm, for like, sure, yeah. It was very kind of seasonal mm-hmm. <laughs> seasonal outfit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was like, I want I want to see 
I, I kind of like if the concept is that they want to go back to the Feywild, they want to stay there. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like it's going to be more sinister than that in the sense that they are kind of, you know, being almost pulled in that direction yeah. um, with this lack of memory, with this uh, yeah. kind of confusion that they have. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be it's going to be tricky and interesting. And um, I saw Erica posted on Twitter today, like the the picture uh, she has of all the people on the cast that she's kissed. And <laughs> who's next? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but there's only three to go. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah, three out of eight. Not bad. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Good job, Erica. <laughs> yeah. And we so live vicariously through you. <laughs> uh, but no uh it's gonna be super interesting and i i, I hope because i mean i huge erica ishii fan um not only in the tabletop rbg community but also in you know voiceover work so i hope we get erica for a while um yeah that'd be really nice because this character seems really interesting uh their personality seems to fit in pretty well with the mm. group um so i'm excited i'm really excited and they'll, they'll mm. probably need all the help they can get going against Armand Treshi and his band of goons of the Paragon Call. So, I could definitely see this being like an extended, uh, you know, character that we have on the show for a while. I'm excited. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's cool. I like the name. I like, I want to see kind of what this rapier saber can do with their Hexblade, maybe because we don't yet know yeah. kind of what type of warlock they mm -hmm. may be. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of lot of interesting possibilities, but I think we should talk about the most exciting aspect of this episode, which is the Taste of Tal'Dorei. The Taste of Tal'Dorei. That is so funny, and I am here for it. A touristy knockoff restaurant of Tal'Dorei. <laughs> That is so I, um, good. I love I love themed restaurants. I love yeah. restaurants that are like region like themed as well. Um, yeah. We we don't really have that too much here. We have like TGI Fridays, mm -hmm. which to me is like the American American bar. Yeah, um, pretty much. Um, so like apart from right that, but I can <laughs> I can only imagine like what this place is like. Like, you know, we enter in and the servers are oh like... God. <laughs> what would what they be wearing, I imagine? Like, Oh, God. Could they go in and there's, like, you know, the Ashari corner or something and there's, like, oh, <laughs> four different wow. colored tables and, like, you know, Whitestone Castle and it's, like... Oh, wow. Oh, but, but, but my head's now going... I know it doesn't make sense for ba Basaras, um, uh -huh. Basaras, but imagine if it's, like, a kid's restaurant <laughs> kind of thing where there are the themed rooms yeah. that you can hire for birthday yeah. parties. There's White Sand oh, Castle, yeah. be, be Lord for a day, or, you know, City of Amon, and it's all, like, fire-themed <laughs> for Thor. I would, I would love <laughs> to see, like, they sit down and, like, there is, like, a birthday party happening and, like, a bunch of the waiters come out to, like, sing happy birthday to them and yeah. stuff. Oh, my <laughs> and then they're God. all dressed up as Vox Machina. Yeah, oh, my <laughs> God. That would be so funny. The, hero, the heroes of Tal'Dorei. Yeah. I could see that happening. That is actually so funny. Uh, oh, my be, God. That's, like, fan service. But also, Ooh, but also that might be... Like, hmm, take a bit of a darker spin on this. That might be... A bit traumatizing for Laudna to see, like someone also <laughs> dressed up as like Vex. You're like, like yeah. oh, I did that once. Yeah. Oh my lord. Yep. Oh my <laughs> lord. Oh my lord. Um, <laughs> references. Oh. Yeah, the dessert bars, the Slayer's cake. Oh my <sighs> god, I can't. Um, wait. I'm, I'm excited for it. Or oh, they're gonna go in and it's just like a dingy bar yeah. that has like, you know, oh, we we serve the finest meals from Town Dora and it's just uh -huh. like crap. Which oh, is absolutely yeah, yeah, for I sure. want it to be the party room version. Mm -hmm. uh, I want, like, but also what I style. Yeah. Well what makes it even more exciting uh is, is Ashton's just pure like hatred for it. Just like Yeah. Yeah, this And like yeah, not being quite secretive and being quite yeah. like um uh quiet about it and not because it's like actually you know, something to keep close to the chest. It's just they yeah. don't want to talk about it. It's just yeah. like, no. Yeah, don't want to. That's not worth it. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like they're heading there. <laughs> like, it seems like that was yeah, the... Yeah, next episode. Was, yeah. Oh, my God.
goodness, that's a cliffhanger. That's the biggest cliffhanger. I know, that <laughs> actually is, because now, oh, man. <laughs> I want to know more about Erica Ishii's character, and I want to know more about the taste of Taldor. That's that's what I want. That's what I want to know. Screw Ruidus. Screw Ruidus. Oh, Ruidus is I'm old news. That is old like, stuff. Delilah, never heard of her. I'm all about the taste of Taldor. That's I was doing can go eat an egg. Like, yep. Yeah. Don't even don't even need anything else. Um, we also had a a, a game. Dropped by Ashton called Death Wish. Yeah. Not that sounds like that sounds like deadly chicken to me. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like. I'm wondering what that is. I'm I'm guessing we'll probably see it, but I don't know. Candid Ice. So it says also Will is pretty much confirmed to be Derek's son. So this is what we were talking about before the stream. Um, yep. Because we saw someone tweet about this saying, "Hey, or name dropped something last night, and we couldn't recall." What the hell? Yeah, I must have been about. like occupied with something else in the moment because I yeah. don't was remember there, there was, being a name drop. Was there an actual name drop of Derek, or was it just like a very Maven Nell? Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Mm. So Nell was Derek's wife. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Ah, I gotcha. Find the context of that now. Hey, everyone's connected. Oh damn it, girls, Nell. that's his family. Okay, <laughs> okay, that definitely went over my head. I think I was. Like writing something down previously. Okay. Um, cool. That's cool. Man, I like Derek. Yeah. I Derek love Derek. Great. Imagine if, imagine if they ever go. Well, I don't think they ever would go to Taldor and go to, um, the place where the Air Sharia live. Zephra. Zephra. Oh my god! I think <laughs> Vespa in my head. I'm like, that's oh. all right. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a good. It's a moment. Yeah. Um. I was like, yeah, I, I don't think they'll ever go there just because it's too, like, Keyleth is too kind of big. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd love to see, like, Derek. Uh, yeah. I wonder how if they ever do that, how they would play that. If it would be, like, a DMPC or if Liam Probably. would add aspects to it. But, yeah, mm -hmm. just such a cool character. I mean, it, it's very possible they, they go to Zephra at some point, especially with, like, mm. the, the Shadow Assassins and stuff. They might have to mm. report back to Keyleth that they find more. So I could definitely see them. Uh, going to Zephra, like this sky's the limit. Throw all expectations out the window with this with this uh, this campaign. So yeah, but it's true we don't know if Derek is alive. But would would so. Orm have mentioned that to the party? Probably not. He just mentioned that a lot of people died, including yeah. um, Will. My husband. So I guess it's possible that Derek died. That's just rude. Ever bringing <laughs> that up in chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's so funny um but yes that would be so i don't know if we'll have like a direct like or need a party crossover with like vox machina or the mighty mm -hmm. nine and stuff yeah. but it That's would be interesting if mm -hmm. vex and laudna ever like met like if there was some kind of a crossover oh. that would be I don't feel, something i feel like i mean we don't truly know where this campaign is going we can assume yeah. it's something ruinous space like that's going to yeah. be a, a mm -hmm. key point a of this campaign one, sure. um we can assume I, I think feel like that's the main thread we have so far yeah. about where the campaign arc may fully goes with ruinous mm -hmm. um so they could go anywhere realistically they but they might the find themselves in oh, please let's do it let's do it <laughs> yeah. um yeah, plane shift up there. We don't even need a plane shift. Just teleport. It's fine. It's fine. Literally. Um, but I like the idea that uh, they might head to Marquette or like mm -hmm. go to places that we've seen before, like Dalen's Closet. I mean, if they go to Marquette, Marquette is where Scanlan lives. Um, there's all kinds of possibilities for that sort of thing. I feel like they're going to keep it to a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it, those little little touches might be nice here and there. Yeah. I go to I go to the Menagerie Coast. I mean, it's not that far off. Exactly, and it's now that you mentioned that one thing that I was that I was thinking of that would be so funny if if they did it is what if I I know it's not because it seems like Dusk is linked to the Feywild, but with the sword that they had, like I was thinking in the moments like when they, uh, she was describing what the sword looked like or when Matt was describing the sword, um, I was like, what if there's like they notice that there's like a uh, yellow 
gem embedded in the in the in the handle of the sword that looks like an eye or something and oh, she wow. was like a warlock of ukitoa or something wild um, but I, definitely not but in the moment <laughs> when when she was describing her character and then the sword i was like oh man what like what if I, they went that route that would i i i miss ukitoa <laughs> i've just realized like how much i miss kind of that constant threat um yep. of ukitoa um Someone's going to have to remind me, what happened with the third orb of Ukitoa? Was it found? Was it... It wasn't p replaced because Ukitoa no, would have been released. No, right, yeah. I'm so wondering, like... One of the things is they, open. Uh, or two, yeah. two of them open. Two one of them is definitely are, open. Two are open, and then there's the last one. Um, the last orb. Do they have it with them? Like... I, I can't remember. Ford still has it. Yeah. yeah. You, I wonder if they would have then gone back and tried to retrieve the other orbs again just to like further close mm -hmm. the seal well, what, um what i think is funny is how <laughs> ford then still has it but then yeah always left it has a lot it? no way um God, or ford, ford has it right and he still spends yeah. his days sailing the seas so like hey. ukatoa is sure still no gonna be pissed off at him and yeah. probably still sending his minions haunted by skyons for the rest of seriously rest of it's so funny um, but I, I'm sure we'll get you know some Ukitoa one shots hopefully at some point because that's a pretty Ooh. big threat that was left. Ne Neely, Neely or Nelly? Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Says I have a fun little crack theory that Dusk is Valora Vassar. Wouldn't it be like Valora, Frederick Stone, Von Musil, Korsky, Dorolo. Who's Valora Vassar? Um, well, Vex. Oh wait, no, no, no. My bad. My bad. No, Valora is Vex and Vax's sister. Oh, sorry. Oh. I think it was the daughter of Percy and Vex, but no, yeah, Valora's their half sister. Oh. That's a cool little one. Oh. I like that. The art wasn't like too dissimilar. Yeah. And she's a elf. Yeah, hmm. I like that. That's um, that's a cool little I theory. Subscribe to that, sure. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and th and that'll be like the last thing, like the. Uh, they get her back to the Feywild and like their parting words, and she'd be like, "Oh, I remember my name, Valora Vassar." <laughs> Anyways, bye. And then uh, see her again. Um, that's like a nice little thing because yeah, there was a lot going on. Like they, Singhorn was in the Feywild for quite some time. I think she was. The, eventually came back, right? Singhorn came back from the Feywild. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I, they're at the wedding, but I'm fairly yeah. certain Singhorn came back. Um, that's cool. I like that. That's a that's a fun theory. Yeah. That might be the best theory we've ever had. Wait, on the yeah. show. <laughs> good job, <laughs> Nelly. So well and good. Nelly, fantastic. Wow. Um, <clears throat> but is there anything else uh, with this episode that we wanted to touch <sighs> on? We apologize for it being like, a bit of a shorter one, but yeah, it wasn't really a it was super lot that happened this one. Um, mm. Obviously, Erica like being here means a lot for the narrative moving forward since we'll have an extra PC, an extra storyline to follow with helping uh, Dusk get back to where they go, uh, where they need to go. Um, we've got Armand and the Paragon's Call in the city as well, so all of that this Yep. Adam shouting at us about the dollhouse. <laughs> the dollhouse? Yeah, that uh, Chetney gave Lordner. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that was super <laughs> that was, sweet. That was cute. Yeah. I love this reaction like, to it. A bang house. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it is. But I love yeah. it. But yes, as you said, a month, a month from now, as in the meantime, we will have Ooh. Exandria Unlimited Calamity next. That's going to be so good. Oh, boy. I'm super excited for energetic Brennan Lee Mulligan telling yep. a horrifying collapse story. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. It's it's it, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be great. <laughs> um but I guess with with that being said, while we're on the topic of that, um we will not be having weekly WT, WTS episodes for Calamity. Uh we will also be taking a bit of a hiatus um in the yeah. meantime, but we will return, I believe, for the, at least the final episode of Calamity where we'll just talk yeah. about all of it um, in one in one session. Yeah. Um, so I and believe it's four episodes, three episodes, the, four episodes. I think it's four. Four. I think it's four, and then they're not taking a break. It's the fourth episode, and then straight back into campaign yes. three. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. 
So, yes, yeah, so for the next at least three weeks, uh, there will not be a podcast episode, um, but then we will return for the final one where we just talk about the entire thing. Still probably might tweet about it, so still check it yeah, out. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so there's that. Um, but I believe that is all we have for this episode. So as always, everyone, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, it's, it's, it's always been a pleasure being able to talk with you all. And uh, I hope everyone enjoys this uh, break from Campaign 3. And I hope everyone enjoys their viewing of Calamity. I'm definitely excited for it. It's definitely a dark time in uh, Exandria's history. So I'm really excited to see what Brennan has come up with and all these new characters we're going to see. If any of them are going to be like famous heroes that we already know of. Super excited for all of the different lore drops that we're going to be able to see and witness firsthand. Um, so as always, don't forget to love each other. Spread the love to everyone you meet, everyone you see. The world needs more love in it, so make sure you are spreading it around. But most importantly, don't forget to love yourself. That is the most important thing you can do, so make sure you are drinking water, eating food, getting plenty of rest. I'm proud of you, and thank you for being here. And so, with that being said... I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your morning, day, evening, wherever you may be on this glorious earth. And we'll see you all very soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. I would just like to take a second to give a huge shout out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters. Thank you to all of my expositors, Leah, Olivia, Sean, Pseudonym, The DM Den, and Hannah. Thank you to all of my archivists, Annika, Daniel, Elliot, Emerson, Melissa, Noel, John, Linnea, and Matt. And thank you to all of my high curators, Adam, Caleb, Iamai, Andrea, Dustin, Rin, and Sylvia. Thank you all so very much for supporting me on Patreon. It truly does mean a lot to me. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Stay awesome, and I'll see you all in the next one.